Hi, Queens. How's it going? Hi. Thanks for taking the time out to talk to me. Congrats on the second season. I got to watch it recently and it was everything I wanted for, everything the gates could have wanted for. So thanks again. <laughs> um, just to get things started, uh, my first question is for you, Sydney. Um, so you make some very uh, interesting choices this season. You've played so many different kinds of characters throughout your career, but do you enjoy getting to play this like messy, horny, complicated teenage girl? And what do you hope the future has in store for her? <laughs> Well, I think that, yes, it's a lot of fun playing such a complex character like Cassie. Uh, I mean, she's a teenager. She's going through teenage emotions and, and teenage situations and some adult situations as well. So it's, it's fun being able to dive into the challenges and the dynamics of a character like that. And what do you see to hope, hope to, uh, the future has in store for Miss Cassie? I hope that the future is just a little kinder to her. Just a little kinder. Mm -hmm. Just a little. <laughs> and I, I hope that she's kinder to herself as well. And uh, Alexa, same kind of, yeah. kind of same question for you. Miss Maddie has really been through it these past two seasons. How yeah. exciting was it to get back into Maddie's heels and what do you hope to see from her in the future? And what's it like just getting to play her mess? Because I love Maddie's mess. So. <laughs> um, I love stepping into Maddie. It's it's it, it's a fun character for me to play. So I think we do see a new side to her this season. I think you see her um, just reflecting and you see her a little more vulnerable, but you know, she still has her, her, her Maddie moments. Um, yeah, I, I just, I loved, playing her again and connecting with her. She's, Maddie definitely had a lot of mess, but I'm <laughs> hoping that it seems like the mess is like kind of cleaning itself out. Mm -hmm. Maybe she's headed in a new direction. We'll see, I don't know. We love to see it. That's what we call growth. <laughs> <laughs> it's growing. Oh. And uh, speaking of growth, Maude, uh, Lexi is really starting to, uh, find more of her own voice this season. How exciting was that to portray, especially, you know, with her new dynamic with Fez, with her continued relationship with Cassie and Rue? What was the most exciting part about getting a showcase more, giving her more of a voice this season? It was all just like so exciting. It was really cool to explore uh, my dynamic with Sydney, like the Lexi-Cassie dynamic, I think is like a lot more complicated than I think people know or people than we saw in last season. Um, and so fun to act with Angus and have sort of like a little romantic thing going on too. I've never really done that. And uh, yeah, no, it was so, it was so great and so fun. This question is kind of for all of you. I know uh, Cassie and Lexi and then Cassie and Maddie all have their own dynamics. What's it like getting to showcase these like complicated female relationships like on screen, where it's like in other TV shows, it's like, they're either too perfect or like they just hate each other, but these are more complex, more nuanced. And you just, we don't have to get to see that on TV a lot. So what's it like getting to bring that to this small screen? As an actor and also just as a viewer as well, it's amazing because there's so much honesty but behind it all. Like we aren't, females aren't just one dimensional or one layer. There's so many layers to the onion as you peel it back and back and back. And so being able to have a, a filmmaker like Sam who writes characters like that is incredible and you don't get that often. So we're really lucky and blessed to be able to do that. Yeah, I think they're just really real. Like these dynamics are so, 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 so real. Like, you know, the Cassie, Maddie and the, you know, with Nate and then also her kind of, I don't, I can't spoil anything, but they're just really, they feel real. Like I've either experienced this or I've seen it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think for me too, like I think all of our characters grew up together and like I went to the same school my whole life and being friends with people for that many years, like it's just, they're complicated relationships and it is really cool to get to see that. They're screaming at each other one day, but then they're they're laughing like the next like sometimes it is kind of crazy like that and I think it's super realistic and he really like got that down 
the you know, friend, the friend group. It's iconic. It's chaotic at the same time, and there are so many personalities. Um, would do you think y'all would be friends with your euphoric euphoric character in real life? And uh, why or why not? <laughs> um, at this moment in my life, <laughs> um, I think I would be friends with Maddie, but then I would probably set some boundaries with her. Mm-hmm. <laughs> boundaries are good. I yeah. don't think so. I think that she's too much of a mess for me. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'd be friends with my character. You would a thousand percent be friends with your character. <laughs> but maybe we'd clash. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I love Lexi. And um, just to wrap things up, obviously this cast is super stacked. There's so much talent and y'all have done so many amazing other projects and TV shows. If you could be a part of another cast member's TV or sh- other TV show or other movie, who and what would it be and why? <laughs> this has been stumping some of the other cast members. <laughs> like a movie they've already done? Yeah. Like any one of your cast members. Oh, of our cast members. Yeah. That's hard. Oh. <laughs> I would have been, Maude, what's the, where, when you're yelling at your mom in the closet? Oh God, <laughs> this is 40. <laughs> I would have been Maude's character in This is 40 yelling. <laughs> this is really hard cut oh. anything that alana was in our mom oh, yeah. Yeah. she's legally blonde that would have been fun uh, so many wow. movies you're just like oh my god so i would love to be in anything that she was in iconic <laughs> <laughs> well that's all the questions i have left you guys but thank you so so much again i can't wait for people to see it and and it was another year, another slay. So thank y'all again. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Hi. Thank you. Hi. Hi, guys. How's it going? Hi, Rafi. Hi. Nice to meet you all. Happy New Year. And thanks for taking so much for taking the time out to talk to me. Congrats on the second season. It's been a long time coming, but it's good to have it all back. <laughs> thank you. So um, just to get things started, my first question is for uh, Jacob. So... Nate is obviously one of the more like intense characters to appear on TV as of lately. Can you talk about um, bringing him back this season? What kind of challenges and obstacles did you encounter trying to channel his toxicity, especially since I think he's such a menace to society? So <laughs> was it like bringing him? Um, I mean, uh, this season was a real treat for me because um, mm-hmm. there was a lot of different things to play and a few different avenues to take and different kind of we see him in different social situations and we see him sort of lose his dominance in a lot of ways. Um, so for me, it was exciting because um, it was it was like approaching a, a whole different set of scenarios. So it was like creating a new character almost. Hmm. And on the flip side of that, were there parts of Nate that you like surprisingly found actually enjoyable or even relatable to play? Not just his demonness. Eric has been saying something quite interesting about there being no consequence. Uh, when you're an actor playing a part and i think that mm-hmm. what you refer to as the demon this um that, that that's a real treat to play because it's you get to explore a side of um human nature that that i that i don't explore and i and i don't get to know so it, that for me is the most exciting part Love to see it <laughs> uh eric so cal's story is one of like a lot of men from previous generations who didn't get to you know be open or explore the sexualities go through there's a whole culture of like men being on the down low and keeping secrets from their families. What kind of research did you do to play someone like Cal? And what was it like bringing him back for a second season where I feel like we get to see him more and get to know more of his story and his motivations? I mean, I didn't really have to do any research. I, I know what it's like to live a double life. You know, the circumstances weren't precisely the same, but it, it doesn't matter. You know, when you put up a facade, you're putting up a facade and you, when you being a certain way with certain people and another way with other people that you know that uh that's sort of uh i don't know the word but transcends sort of the 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 specifics of the circumstances you know Mm -hmm. bringing it back for a season two was great you know i got to create a whole new character like jacob said you know, um, Cal is, is living his truth. And within that, you know, you get a guy who's completely free. And we've never seen that from him last year because he was so contained. It's good. We'd love to see, <laughs> see it. <laughs> and uh, Austin, I feel like uh, 
Ethan is like on the opposite end of the spectrum of Nate and Cal when it comes to like boyhood and manhood, especially mm. in the end of the first season and the beginning of season two. He's like so sweet and so nice to Kat. Did you mm. like getting the balance out? Everyone's like, you know, toxic masculinity with an example of what <laughs> masculinity and kindness can and should be like. Um, I think, yeah, just in general, like the character is very fun to play, you know, and very, I feel like, um, tries to, um, <clears throat> live being very, um, I feel like honest and like trying to be his most like authentic self and like be vulnerable. And I feel like put himself out there. Um, and that's, and that's fun to, to like explore, um, and like enjoyable to explore. Cause I feel like he is a genuinely like a nice, like thoughtful person or like does his best to, to, to be like thoughtful. Um, so yeah, yeah, it's like, it's very nice to play. Ethan is a sleeper favorite, so. A what? <laughs> a sleeper favorite. <laughs> so. um, and Angus, so Fez was obviously one of my favorite characters in season one, but in season two, I feel like he's finally getting his shine. So what's it like, uh, you know, being a scene stealer, getting to show up and. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, oh, yeah, man, it feels, uh, it definitely feels good. <clears throat> I mean, I was supposed to die in season one, so I just oh. had to make it to season two, you feel me? Well, I'm glad you didn't die. <laughs> I also think Fez's grandma deserves her own prequel series, so <laughs> we need to talk to her to make that happen. It should happen. <laughs> yeah, that'd be badass. <laughs> she, she's, she, she's, she's, she's a badass, for sure. Uh-huh. <laughs> no, and I'm just no arguing that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and just one more question just to wrap things up I know the friend group in the show is so iconic and chaotic and there's so many different personalities do you think you would be friends with your euphoric your euphoric character in real life why or why not hopefully you get an uh, answer from everybody I just missed the last part of that question would you be friends with your euphoria character in real life why or why not <laughs> I wouldn't <laughs> yeah I, I don't think so yeah. I think for my character, I, I probably would be. He seems like a nice, nice person. <laughs> Ethan, for sure. Yeah, I'd be <laughs> with my character. I don't know how long. I don't know uh, if we get along so well, but. I'd like to see it. <laughs> That's all the questions I have. I'm getting the reps. But thank you again, guys, and congrats on the second season. Can't wait for more. Thank you very much. Yeah.